What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Overwatch League Report. I'm your host, Tamor, filling in for Brian, and I'm joined as always by Ben, and we have a new guest on the show, a, I'm happy to say, a permanent member of the uh, Owl, Owl Report, Jenny. How's it going, Jenny? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be on the Owl Report, uh, talk a lot about games. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're so happy to have you come on as a permanent me- member. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be an exciting end of the season, I think, especially with the addition of you, uh, because you are a Symmetra main, uh, essentially in our group, and I think Symmetra is gonna be really important going forward. Um, you're definitely the best Symmetra that I know, uh, and um, yeah, I did I did want to before we get into the week's matches, I do want to talk about uh, Symmetra's role going forward and sort of your impressions as far as uh, the change. I, I know at first you kind of thought she was like nerfed and you were kind of unhappy <laughs> with the, the new Symmetra. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was excited at first when they made the initial change uh, with a teleporter and I was really excited because it felt more fast paced with her. You can get behind the enemy lines. You could like bomb them with all of your little like uh, turret thingies that actually have a name that I can't remember in this moment even though it's a main. <laughs> And oh, <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. Every time I say it, I'm like, is this a Torb thing? And I'm getting confused. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I, it was a lot more fast paced, and I was finally like getting used to playing that way because that's not how I played her before that. And like going behind them, we would do a lot of the teleporters around the point. And so at first, when they were like, oh, the teleporter sticks now, and I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like I like to like pick it up, move it around, like go quickly, but. After playing her a while now with the new updates, I actually think it's the same. <laughs> mm. But now you also have the additional option, kind of what she was like originally, like OG Sim, where you have the um, her alt was the teleporter, and oftentimes you would use it as a way to like move people from spawn quickly to whatever you're trying to get at. And so now you actually have that option to you could do that now because the teleporter doesn't go away. Or you can still play a, as an attack sim and get behind enemy lines and that kind of thing. So I actually think it gives her more flexibility, which is exciting. Mm, yeah, for sure. And I mean, we did see uh, some Symmetra play this week. Was it uh, uh, Bebe? Baby Bebe. Yeah, Bebe. It was so beautiful. A single tear watching <laughs> him play her. It's so nice to finally see, like... I don't know. This two 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 thing is really exciting. Seeing more players. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're seeing a lot more Reaper, a lot more May. Um, I do think you know they change. They've changed these characters for the better. Reaper, you can they, you know you see players kind of just like jumping in with that uh, teleport uh, sort of move. Whereas mm-hmm. I feel like in the past it was like it took forever and like you would use it after you like left spawn to like get to like the point quicker but like otherwise you never really used it but it, now it's like right. an actual yeah. tactical like move exactly um, you don't have to worry about leaving people behind <laughs> yeah the teleporter like disappears yeah you fall onto the map yeah it's so, a much better improvement so let's talk about the matches uh as we mentioned baby bay on the symmetra i think atlanta you know they they really killed it uh, this weekend so they First game was against Dallas Fuel. Unsurprisingly, mm-hmm. they did win three and one. And their second game, they utterly destroyed Boston Uprising, <laughs> unfortunately, with a four and zero. Oh. Ben, uh, what was your takeaway from from this? I mean, not just like it, it was like embarrassing because, like in the in Map Four in Junkertown, uh, Atlanta was just kind of memeing. They put in uh, Gator for Pokpo, and they put in Funny Astro for uh, Masa, and they. Uh, they had uh, fried basically on Ryan for much of the map, just kind of like charging in and just like swinging his hammer and just like you know, uh, you know, acting like a fool. But they still were able to win the map. Baby Bay was like changing heroes randomly every single time he died. He was like basically mystery heroes. Uh, you know, it was it was it was kind of a. Uh, it was like a, a clown fiesta, and, and like Boston was actually like trying for the most part, mm-hmm. but like they still couldn't win the map, which is like pretty <laughs> sad, you know, sad. But it also kind of shows that like Atlanta's, you know, here and they're not they're not messing around. And like as you as you mentioned, Baby Bay on the sim uh, was uh, very impressive. I know that they are kind of preparing for the Sigma patch meta that's going to be uh, available during the playoffs, where Symmetra is probably going to be. Uh, played a lot more because 
uh, on high rank ladder right now. The uh, the primary tank line that we're seeing is Arisa Sigma, just because uh, like damage dealers have been buffed so much in recent patches that the double shield uh, provides the kind of protection that you need for your team, uh, and it's just like it's just super strong because like both shields can be moved around. They're not really connected to a hero the way they are for like a Reinhardt, uh, and they are both very uh, high in health. And so you have Symmetra who is able to more easily burn down shields, and so. That's why Symmetra is being played mostly. I love the sound of her beam when it gets like fired up. Oh my god! You just like sit there, it's like yeah. you're like the power. It's the best, really. Yeah, and then you get killed by it, and you like watch your replay. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. I get why I yeah. got killed because so her beam was like this big. Um, and it's like insta kill. Like sometimes it's like she literally just touched me and I died. <laughs> yeah. and, like, and you get really pissed at first, and then you remember like, oh yeah, she was like fired up, but yeah. Oh. A lot. So I think it, it, it you know, the Boston's loss in that case, it makes sense as we were, as we mentioned last weekend, Dallas and Boston are basically, you know, bottom two teams uh, mm -hmm. in the league right now, especially with the current meta. Um, and, you know, it's the end of the season. It's, you can't really, they can't really do much about it besides like go back to the drawing board, maybe switch some players next year. Um, uh, but I, as far as Dallas, I mean, what do they, what do they really, they need Ben? Like, it's, it feels like, you know, their, their coaching staff is like some of the most like notable coaching staff, I think that we have in the league, you know, people know Arrow, people know, um, I'm blanking on his name now, but, uh, Jane. yeah, Jane, um, but, you know, these guys, it feels like they are, like, stuck in, like, 2016 with, like, their, like, their thinking as far as, like, how a team should be formed and what the meta is. What do they need? What do they need to change? Um, skills. Just <laughs> 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 the players wow, are great. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that especially this meta just does not really... Uh, jive with the talent that they have uh, with like Note as their off tank and Note has been like kind of a you know diva one trick for uh, much of his career. He yeah, has you good have Roadhog plays. I thought yeah he he's been he's been a lot better in the last uh, like week or two uh, mm -hmm. especially like this week uh, they did uh, perform pretty well against Atlanta even though they lost and Note was like a big um, performer in that and he did get yeah, like a lot of really clutch hooks especially on uh, Volskaya. Yes. Uh, so, I mean. He's definitely gotten better, but it's still like uh, an uphill battle. And definitely, they've had uh, issues where, like I mentioned before, they just don't have uh, a solid kind of like starting six roster that has a synergy um, for like that is needed for this meta. Where they have uh, their damage dealers kind of going in and out, and it's not like rain where it's like strategic going in and out. Where they have uh, end layer for when they need uh, to have Erster on the sniper roll. And they have Baby Bay for when they want uh, the Reaper, Reaper May combo. It's it's a lot more uh, like kind of all over the place. And mm -hmm. uh, like I think I mentioned before, like the e even uh, just from like a map to map perspective, of this stage the only like consistent player that they've had in has been Closer. Uh, and even still, like they've been messing around with like this double. Kind of flex support setup where we've seen uh we're seeing a lot less uh like mercy lucio and we've seen a lot more batiste being played as a second support so it just seems like the the skills that their players have aren't really meshing with the like necessary skills for this uh current meta yeah um and it's it's sad to see but you know as we mentioned with boston it's it's the end of the season the only thing really left to do is just go back to the drawing board and maybe think about trades, think about, you know, what your team should be going forward. Uh, uh, but, you know, one team that hasn't hasn't been looking great, but, you know, looked looked pretty decent this weekend was uh, NYXL. <laughs> um, maybe pretty decent is kind of a, a, an overstatement, but they, you know, they beat Boston. Not you know not the hardest thing even though Boston did get a win on them, 
And uh, and then they unfortunately lost to Vancouver, which, you know, was a fairly close game. So I guess there is that going for them. But um, I guess the question is, do they have... Do they have, you know, what it takes to, to like, really be a top team going forward? Or, or, is, or are these matches a bad sign um, going into the finals? Or the playoffs, rather? Um, Yeah, it's tricky because, like, they definitely did look better this weekend. I think that uh, them running uh, Flower over Nene and a lot of these maps... Uh, seemed like a huge improvement. I think that Flower has a much uh, wider hero uh, pool, and he uh, is able to perform on heroes like Hanzo and Farah, where uh, they've kind of struggled in the past. And so I think that that's a good change, and Flower really impressed me uh, from what I saw of him this weekend. Uh, And they did play Vancouver close. They almost beat them. They took them not five. I mean... Uh, their performance on Hanover especially was really good. Mm. Um, so, I, I mean, I'm definitely not out on the possibility of NYXL kind of having this. Uh, it, it, it's weird to say it, that for them to have like a Cinderella story because <laughs> they're they're like second right now overall. Yeah. <laughs> they're like going into the playoffs as the number two seed, so they shouldn't be an underdog. But because right. of their performance in this last stage, they are kind of coming into the playoffs as an underdog. Um, but because they're in that number two seed, they are going to be playing one of the play-in teams in the first round of the overall playoffs. It is double elimination, so if they can get an easy opponent uh, like London or uh, Seoul, maybe, then, you know, I mean, they're not an easy opponent, but they're an easier opponent, um, mm-hmm. then maybe they'll be able to, you know, push their way into uh, a top four position, the winner's bracket. And then from there, I mean, it's... You know, they have to win, what, like, two out of their next three matches to make the, the, the finals? It's not out of the realm of possibility, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, what I found really funny was how, you know, in the in interviews before uh, the uh, Vancouver match, Bumper was saying that, like, he, even though New York thinks of themselves as, like, a rival to Vancouver, uh, Bumper at least doesn't doesn't see it that way. They're just like another team who they can easily beat. And then to to add even more saltiness at the end, uh, Bumper was like, "Yeah, we we didn't even like practice for this match. I just want NYXL to know that like we just came in and had fun and we ended up winning." Which I mean, do you think Damn. do you think they practice? Or is that just like Bumper like talking shit, Jenny, or is that like? Is that legit? I mean, I guess for them, like, they play so much. Like, if they don't play for a few days, does it really make too much of a difference? <laughs> but but then at the same point, then, like, how much of that is really, like, a, a stab at them? Because, like, a few days isn't going to make them all of a sudden just terrible players. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty hilarious when they poke fun at each other. Um in the, <laughs> when they get interviewed, I just think it's hilarious and kind of adds more to the matches when they play against each other. But yeah, I mean, it was definitely a clever one, but I don't think it makes that much of a difference. Plus, I feel like, I don't know, if I'm like in the Overwatch League, I want to be playing every day. I want to be a <laughs> pro for life, and I love yeah. the game, so. Yeah. Can we even stop playing for a couple days? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think that was like probably just... Uh... Bumper trying to like uh, tilt off the Excel going into the playoffs. Yeah, uh, totally. yeah. It was just like, I mean, I think the more uh, disrespectful thing, which I think is 100% true, uh, was the rain saying they didn't prepare at all for either of these two matches and they've just been scrimming on the uh, on the new patch of preparation for the playoffs. And they're just kind of like assuming that they're going to beat Dallas and Boston, which obviously <laughs> was a good assumption. Uh, yeah, in yeah. hindsight. <laughs> So they, that's why you saw Baby Bay playing so much Sinatra this weekend uh, was just mm-hmm. like to try and get that extra practice in on that hero. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you think about it in a way, like practicing as a team and getting that like cohesive, I don't know, like camaraderie or just like, you know, as comrades, you're like, even if you're having fun with it, not even practicing necessarily what you think the other team is going to play. I feel like that's, you know, just as constructive uh, if, Mm-hmm. If you know that the other team isn't like you know as as cohesive, like Boston just does not look as cohesive. Dallas 
looking like a mess. Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, it makes sense. Um, one team that I think, you know, they, they, they look strong together, but they unfortunately did not make it into the playoffs was Ellie Valiant. And these were the two games that really mattered for them. They uh, were to face off against Los Angeles Gladiators and San Francisco Shock, with obviously the Gladiators game being their kind of like their uh, best chance into the uh, playoffs. But unfortunately, they lost day one, three to one uh, against Gladiators. And then, of course, uh, on Sunday, they lost to San Francisco Shock four and four to four and oh. Um, yeah, what are you? Are you, uh, are you guys sad to see uh, LA Valiant out of the, out of the game, or is this kind of like you know they had their chance, they kind of they kind of screwed it. I personally love space, so I'm always rooting for LA Valiant. Just just I mean, obviously the whole team's great, but mm-hmm. I, I was bummed for sure. Yeah, what about you, Ben? <laughs> hey, you can watch uh, during the uh, Overwatch World Cup on Team USA. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, also, I wanted to talk after we talk about LA Valley. Yeah. I want to talk about the Team USA beef and drama that I heard. <laughs> okay, definitely. <laughs> Y'all need to fill me in. I like saw a highlight and some team like totally like dissing about I, I Americans being on the team. Yes, man, yeah. dog man. Please explain. I was no, like, okay. Yeah, that. But um, <laughs> yeah. So I. I'm, I guess I'm like kind of disappointed that the Valiant aren't going to be there. Uh, they were like such a strong uh, team last season, um, and they, you know, obviously made the playoffs last season. And uh, you know, they didn't uh, go super far. They were out in the first round, right? Against no, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, they were out in the first round against New York. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I mean. It's disappointing, um, and you know they had a rough start to the season, which obviously dragged them down a lot. But I am excited to see the Hunters, who are the ones who took that 12 spot, uh, make it into the play-ins because you know there, there's a chance that the Hunters are able to make something happen. Uh, they're yeah. not particularly my dark horse candidate to get out of the play-ins, but mm-hmm. there are uh, you know they're still there, and it'll be exciting to watch some more of them. At least at least one more match for uh, for the 2019 season. Yeah, exactly. That's that's kind of my thought is like as much as I, I love L.A. Valiant and, you know, kind of wanted to see them in there just because they they seem like they could have been like a dark horse that, you know, could have maybe, you know, mixed things up. I think Chengdu even more so is really going to like <laughs> confuse people in the way that they always do where they just like mm-hmm. play random crap and uh it's it's like totally not what the other team planned for, and in in a way, you know, they they maybe they maybe they'll like upset like Guangzhou Charge or something like that, and kind of throw things throw things off from how we're kind of expecting it to go. Um, mm-hmm. At least it'll be entertaining because you don't know what to expect with them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, LA, they're LA Valiant. At least they're they're out. Los Angeles Gladiators looking as strong as ever. Um, and so is uh, San Francisco Shock. We had one of the, I think, one of the best matches this entire season, which was F- SF Shock versus Vancouver Titans. Oh, yeah. And uh, spoiler alert, San Francisco Shock did win in the end, even though it was a very, very close game going to the absolute last match. But this was interesting because I think we hadn't seen the current iteration of San Francisco Shock uh, against the Titans. We, you know, we're so used to the uh, GOATS meta um san francisco shock and their sort of rivalry against vancouver with like super and sinatra on board um mm-hmm. but here we see you know like repel and and uh and you know the, the dps heroes and they did not disappoint <laughs> yeah i mean that was a really high match potential uh preview for maybe like a quarterfinal or even potential grand final matchup yeah. uh or a semi-final, I mean, not the quarter-final. Um, but a potential quarter-final, or... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> potential semi-final, or... Blame it on the cold. <laughs> or even a potential uh, grand-final uh, matchup. And, uh, you know, if... It, we, we've been, like, prepping since, you know, the uh, Stage 1 playoffs for a potential setup <laughs> with the Shock versus Titans in the playoffs. So, mm. I, you know, I'm, I'm very excited... Uh, for that it was a great match uh, and i'd love to see them play again yeah me too i 
I mean, I, I think I've said this before, but I really do think those two teams are going to be uh, in the grand finals. And I think this was definitely a preview of that. And I think, an, a, a, you know, last year was great. We were all there. We went and we saw London mm -hmm. destroy Philly, <laughs> which was cool. But I think it would have been even more fun if the games were even closer. So I think with these yes. two teams, you know, there's, a, there's an excitement as far as these, this could go to the very last, the very last uh, hold, you know, and um, yeah, I mean that, that's a, that's at least what I'm kind of uh, hoping for. Have you told everyone that we're going to the? Yes, yes. I'm sure I mentioned them a bunch of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> so excited. <laughs> yep. Yeah. The six we of have us. To keep talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's gonna be a blast. We're going to Philly. We'll probably like do a vlog like we did last year, or mm -hmm. at least Brian probably will <laughs> yeah. of it. And um, yeah, we're so we're so stoked. Um, but I guess let's jump back to the drama over Team USA. <laughs> <laughs> so Give me the juicy details. <laughs> all right. So as we know, co the coach of the Dallas Fuel, uh, Arrow, is the the head coach of the U Team USA. And he obviously had some say over which players were going to be on Team USA. The Atlanta Reign are, I think, how many? They have like five American five. players and yeah. none of them got picked up. And obviously Dogman was like really salty about it. So uh, during the uh, interview after their Dallas Fuel game, he took that opportunity to, you know, definitely show to Arrow like you fucked up because we just destroyed your, your team. <laughs> and I thought that was like, I thought that was funny and it was, it was, you know, it was deserved in a sense. But then he kind of went, I think, an extra step that I think was like too far where he, I think he said like the, the coaching team is like uh, GG incompetent. He, he, yeah, he, he went a little bit further and um, I think kind of almost like burned some bridges, which probably wasn't a great idea. Um, no. Is there anything that I'm missing, Ben, or is that basically... I mean, there were some responses from other players on Twitter. Oh, you know, wow. some other like, right. people saying, you know, speaking their mind about the statement that Dogman made, and uh, I think like Custer, somebody made one. Like, there were a, a few players made some some statements. Uh, Are they all like generally on the same page, or were they saying more things of like he probably shouldn't have said that kind of? No, most of them are most of them are saying that like he crossed the line, uh, and mm -hmm. I think that there's a general consensus on like Reddit, for instance, that uh, that Dogman went too far. I personally, I love drama. I love sports <laughs> drama. Me too. The tea. <laughs> I I think that like you need <laughs> you need like villains in order to like make storylines like. Watch with, their team win now. Um, <laughs> 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 it'd be a crazy. It'd be a good setup though for next season, right? Uh, yeah. It'd mm, be like the big totally. bad. It would be like uh, Infinity War, right? Where the, <laughs> the bad guy wins in the, the first, uh, the first oh, yeah. half, and then, you know everyone's trying to the take heroes. him down in next season. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I think that like in order for a sports league to succeed, you need to have storylines, you need to have rivalries, you need to have. Yeah. yeah. You need to have like people like our players that are beloved. You need to have players that are hated. You need to have you know beef, like you mentioned. You need like there needs to be something more to that the to the league other than just like oh we're gonna play some games against each other. These two teams are gonna play now. I guess we're gonna watch. We're all wins. best friends. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that you know having somebody like Dogman who is like kind of a dick <laughs> and who like you know, has a big mouth and right. who like shit talks everybody and like a team like the Atlanta rain that kind of in general embodies that kind of, you know, vibe. We mm -hmm. talked about this kind of in the preseason and got uh, disliked for it down <laughs> like, the fanboys. And it's yeah. like, I, I don't think people, I think people like, they love to hate a team, and this has been a chosen team regardless of whether or not I think it was really that like crazy what uh, he said. I mean, I don't I know. in the preseason that the Atlanta Reign built themselves to be like the the <laughs> the like uh, edgy villains of the league, right? <laughs> and everyone right. hated me for it. But I, I mean, I don't think yeah. <laughs> it's just like that, that's their brand. Their brand is to be like the these like edge lord, uh, like you know, bad guys who you kind of like love to hate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, or like yeah. some some people like are legitimate fans of them and love to love them and like 
revel in the the shit talking. And I think that's pretty cool too. I mean, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, even look at their logo. It's kind of like a Star Wars villain or something like logo <laughs> and uh obviously defran was on the team at the beginning of the season and that was like True. a huge thing for people and i feel like people wanted to more so than even like be a fan of them they wanted to stick up for them <laughs> in, in in a way it was like sort of the mentality of like we know you guys are going to hate them but we want to have their backs no matter mm-hmm. what um it's even just like i think the De- friends uh a fan base sort of the mentality behind mm-hmm. it and it's, I think it's transferred over to, you know, Baby Bay and Dogman. And yeah, I mean, I, I do think, I do think it's important to have these, uh, <laughs> these, these moments, as you, as you say, to create a story. It's like a cross division rivalry. Yeah. Which, you know, I mean, we also have like Vancouver, San Francisco rivalry. We have like, I guess, uh, LA Valiant, LA Gladiators in a way. Um, but yeah, we, I guess, uh, more I think about it, we need more of these ri- rivalries because I can barely think of that many. <laughs> um, I'm I feel surprised like... Boston and New York didn't just like automatically become rivals per standard sports drama. Yeah. I mean, they probably would if Boston was good this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. you're right. I, I, I think that's definitely the case. <laughs> Come on, Boston, give us the drama we need. <laughs> I know. I mean, say what you want, but Boston, they had, like, the most um, uh, reverse sweeps this season by far. And that was, I think that in itself was just really impressive, uh, even though they kind of fell apart toward the end of the season. That's fair. Um, yeah, who else? Uh, I think that's that's pretty much it as far as, like, the important games that we saw during the Kit Kat rivalry weekend. Um, which brings us to, you know, the playoffs and the end of the season. This is like, this is getting really interesting. It's really starting to heat up. We're seeing the very best teams, uh, go head to head. And, um, I'll throw up on the screen right now, the playoff bracket for the double, double elimination format. And so we're going to see, uh, Titans versus the play and winner in eighth, eighth spot. Uh, we're going to see Spark versus Gladiators. That'll be interesting. New York versus the play and winner in the seventh spot. And Shock versus Rain. Um, now, before we get into uh, the play in bracket, uh, Shock versus Rain. I feel like. So, we were talking about this earlier, Ben. I, in my mind, Shock's, Shock has this in the bag, but you have another theory in mind. What's well, your theory? I mean. I also said that I think I think that the shock will win this. I think it'll be close. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you look at the performance of the rain uh, this stage, they've been one of the best performing teams, if not the best performing team in the stage. Uh, and I think they definitely have a, a huge uh, potential to make a run for it here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think even if the shock do win this uh, matchup, the rain have a pretty good uh, chance of being able to run their way through the the lower loser bracket. And we might end up seeing a, a rematch with the Shock and the Rain in the grand finals. I think that right now, uh, the Rain are my. I don't even want to say Dark Horse Candidate. I think the Rain are probably the third best team right now behind San Francisco and Vancouver. So I don't really think that's a Dark Horse. I think that's just like they're, you know, slightly less likely to make it than these other two teams that everyone just kind of assumes is going to be there. Um, mm-hmm. I do. I do kind of want to talk about my dark horse candidate for coming out of the plans, though. Uh, cool. So let's talk about that. Yeah. We'll talk about plane bracket where we <laughs> have charge versus hunters. We have uh, fusion uh, versus dragons, and then the lowest remaining seed versus uh, London Spitfire, and the highest remaining seed versus Soul Dynasty. Um, so I guess let's break this down match by match and kind of uh, uh, see where we think it might head. So Charge versus Hunters. I feel like Charge might have this, but Hunters, as we mentioned before, can pull out some like crazy random shit mm-hmm. and like surprise them completely. I mean, are, are, are the Guangzhou Charge like uh, less likely to be surprised than uh, some other teams? Um, I think the charge, well, I was, I was insinuating, I think that there's a team 
Like, I think <laughs> most people <laughs> are assuming that the Spitfire and the Dynasty are going to make it out because they have the buy. They are the better teams on paper. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> but the Charge are my dark horse candidate to make it out of plans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the Charge will beat the Hunters, and then they will be playing against the Dynasty, who have been kind of, you know, on and off. I mean, Fitz has been really strong, um, and Marvel has really come into his own and not maintaining position. Yeah. Uh, and then Michelle is obviously always really good. But I think that um, I think that Charge has been incredibly strong in this stage and in this meta. So I think that uh, they, have a, they have a very uh, high percent chance of making it out of the play-ins. Um, and you're looking at the other teams, uh, Fusion and Dragons have been underwhelming, especially recently yeah, with the Dragons. Uh, Hunters are incredibly unpredictable. So I think that it's going to be two of those three teams, Charge, Spitfire, and Dynasty. I think the Spitfire are probably locked in, and the other slot will either go to the Charge or the Dynasty. Um, or I think that the, the Charge are <clears throat> potentially being under... Uh, un, is it, it's underreported how uh, I think how likely it is I think the Charge can make it out. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the really interesting aspects about this is that we see the you know two teams that were in the finals in the inaugural season London versus uh, London and Fusion, you know, and basically what we're seeing is like neither of these teams. There's no way that both of these teams can end up in the finals again this year. It's it's you know I think that really speaks to the season uh, where we had the Scouts meta and now things are shifting and mm-hmm. you know these top teams have kind of um, you know it's it's good to see them still up there, but. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, it's definitely different from last year. Um, I wonder if that's frustrating being on like those teams being top dog and then midway through all of a sudden the meta change because the game literally changed. Granted, yeah. probably long term as we've noticed for the better, but it's like couldn't they have waited until like next season maybe? Uh, but I don't know. I, I'm sure you guys have talked about this a lot, but I, I feel like it must be so frustrating for them because they were like. Kicking butt now. Mm. I mean, the fusion, the fusion weren't doing great either way, in my opinion. They're continuing, but still. <laughs> uh, I mean, even like you talk about the fusion and the Spitfire being top dogs last season, but going into the playoffs, they were the bottom two seeds going in. So, oh, yeah, I it, about is, that. it is technically possible, I believe, for both of them to really? still make the finals. I think the Hunters have to beat the Charge and the Fusion have to. Uh, to win, and then the fusion will be matched up against Seoul. And if they beat Seoul and London beats the Hunters, then they both will make it into the playoffs. And then that bracket is such a mess that, like, literally right. any two teams can basically make it to the end. That's right. the elimination. I guess that's a good point. I, I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's not likely. I think that the, the Hunters unlikely. beating the Charge is unlikely. <laughs> yeah, I think that the the fusion beating the Dragons is also. Uh, unlikely. I think that even with the mm-hmm. Dragons' performance, they're probably uh, slightly favored. So, and then I think that Seoul is favored against both teams. So I think that yeah, it's obviously not likely that we see even both of those teams make it out of the play-ins. Never mind make mm-hmm. it all the way to the end again. Uh, but it is theoretically possible. Yeah. Well, it'll be cool to see <clears throat> new teams get to have the experience of right. I mean, we talk about, like, mm-hmm. how dominant the Shock are and how the Shock are the best team in the league by far, uh, even though their record puts them as a third seed. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, the San Francisco Shock were awful last season. Like, they were not good. Uh, like, mm-hmm. a lot of their success this season has come from players like Super and Sinatra who, like, weren't able to really play last season. So, like, it, it's, it, it's interesting to see, like, kind of the... Uh, development that that team has gone through where last season they were not really taken seriously at all and now they're mm-hmm. basically like the runaway favorite that everyone has to like win the whole thing yeah totally um so as far as these the, the playing bracket you're thinking uh london and and charge eh? uh yes i think london for sure and then Either Soul or Charge, and I'm going yeah. to go out and limit and say I think the, the Charge have the advantage. Yeah. And then, what do yeah. you think, and then, Jenny? 
Oh God, I have not been following this season enough <laughs> <laughs> to know. I'm just in it for fun. No, I'm excited. <laughs> as long as the games are close and exciting, I, I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm sure, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure. really in it to just root for her. Yeah. I'm probably the underdog of every match, regardless of who it is. Like I'll, I'll be rooting for them. Yeah, that's typically what I do. Unfortunately, <laughs> Dragons and Fusion are both underdogs, and they're probably gonna <laughs> be out of the play in bracket. Like, that's my yeah. my feeling. <laughs> If you want to root for an underdog and be happy, I think the charge <laughs> is the way to go. <laughs> the charge. And speaking of the happy, charge. <laughs> happy will carry the charge. <laughs> happy right. and Nero. Maybe yeah. I should start Pretty. paying more attention to the charge. I, they're they're one of those teams that I just like. I don't know why I, I overlook. I think because they're so like dead center a lot of the time. I'm always like, yeah, they're mm-hmm. not like bad enough for me to be like. I should root for them, or they're not like amazing enough that they're always like in the you know. Anyway, so okay, so let's say we have charge in London going into the playoff bracket. Um, London versus Titans. Have we? I feel like we've seen this before, and Titans destroyed them. <laughs> I I'm not gonna bet against the Titans or the Shock uh, yeah. at least in the like start of the like I. It would take a phenomenal, uh, like, experience for... Well, it, w- it wouldn't be Titans versus London. It would be Titans versus Charge. Charge. Okay. Mm. Uh, because the Charge are lower seeded and Titans are number one seed. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would be London oh, versus so New, New York. Yeah, so that'd be a really, that'd be a really fun game. <coughs> yeah, um, I actually think London could win that. Yeah, definitely. And I, I would love to see London move forward in that, in that way. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know... There, those two teams were such like we talk about rivals. They were kind of rivals in the first season, and um, watching their old games, it's just so fun seeing like the pure like skill of both of the players, both the teams players. And uh, if we could see that again in this like you know toward the end of this season, that would be so fun. Um, so you, you would bet on London, Jenny. What, what do you think, Excelsior or London or London Spitfire? Uh, I have to agree with Ben only because he's the resident expert here. <laughs> <laughs> New York has been looking better. If if like they can continue with the if, the the setup they've had with Flower, I think that could be uh, could lead to a lot of success. But I think that betting on New York to win the playoffs is a uh, fool's errand. Yeah. Is Fury still on the Spitfire? Uh, yes. Oh, all right, cool. I like Fury so. <laughs> so London, yeah. That's I mean, I, I, I would, uh, yeah. I put my money on London too. Although, I don't know something about Flower. Like Flower is amazing, but he pulls up these like insane moves and then like dies. That's like my main problem with him. Is, like, He's playing a lot of Farah. I mean, that's kind of what Farah does. Yeah, I mean that is the Farah, <laughs> the nature of Farah. But um, I don't know. Yeah, I I feel like. They need to like dial him like back a tiny bit so he can stay alive. Yeah. Well, at least he's not like Nene, like yeeting alts into the fucking <laughs> void. Right. Oh, so Titans versus Guangzhou. Titans, I think, are gonna get, are gonna yeah. most likely win that. Oh, Titans. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that if Guangzhou can make a run at it, it's gonna be in the losers bracket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Spark versus Gladiators. This could be close, but I think I would put my money on Spark. What about you guys? I agree. Yeah. I think Spark yeah. has looked really good. And Shock versus Rain, as we mentioned, I think Shock would probably have that. But then we have, so when we're match one and two, so we'd have, techni- we'd have hypothetically Titans versus Spark. That would be really fun. Um, yeah, close. I think I would still bet on Titans. I mean, I think it depends on, with them, like how much they take it seriously and kind of like prepare i feel like that's their biggest downfall is like they know that they're so good that they can just like yeah exactly like kind of throw it away (sighs) in that sense i think them missing the stage three finals would would have been enough of like a a slap in the face for them to Mm -hmm. at least take the lead like they you know it they had no reason to take these last two matches uh seriously right this is just for fun like they had already locked up the number one seed like so it it makes sense like the, the, maybe maybe i am coming around to like they didn't actually practice for kind of, <laughs> kind of like the atlanta rain but even like you know 
it makes more sense even for them because like these two matches didn't matter they were basically just for show yeah uh because yeah. the top three seeds were locked in so it makes sense if they were just like practicing on the new patch uh so i i do think that they are going to be taking the playoffs seriously and i do think that mm. they have a solid shot to make a run for the finals yeah um Agreed. yeah i think you're right and then uh so we would have shock versus london potentially um in our hypothetical bracket um <laughs> i feel like shock yeah it's so funny because like london versus excelsior in new york is like feels like a really close match to me even shock versus rain feels closer than like shock versus london like even if london fights their ass off to get there i feel like shock's gonna like destroy them what, what, what do you guys think I, I, I'm not going to bet against Shock or Vancouver at this point. Like, it's just... They're consistently it, it's, very good right now. I, I want the Rain or the Charge to make, like, the kind of underdog run through the loser's bracket into the finals and mm-hmm. then, like, at least put up a good fight against one of these other two teams. Um, but it is looking like the most likely situation we're going to see is Shock versus Titans. Which right. is not bad. Like that's that's awesome. Like, yeah, it's gonna be a really badass match. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be yeah. super awesome. Like, <laughs> like they've they've faced each other four times now, uh, mm-hmm. twice in the regular season, then twice in the stage one and two finals, and mm-hmm. they've won two matches each. So, if ah! the first time they face each other, uh, in the uh, grand finals again, we could have like a like a tiebreaker match. But they might face each other like earlier on and then have like one of them get knocked down to the loser's bracket. And then mm-hmm. like if, if they are the finals of the winner's bracket and then one of them gets knocked down and, and beats whoever is also in the loser's bracket, we'll just have like a a rematch of the match that we had just seen. So like that could be less <laughs> exciting. Um, but it would still be pretty hype. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Is there any uh, possibility that London comes out <laughs> on top? <laughs> I mean, look, it's any given Sunday, right? And these these matches have been relatively close. All of these teams are strong. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I, you know, I, I doubt we're going to see zero upsets in the playoffs. Right. So, True. Like, it's like it's just kind of where the upset's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, Good point. Yeah. yeah. And hopefully, you know, I guess, we'll, you know, we'll have Sigma by then. We'll see a lot more Symmetra. Uh, it'll be it'll be really interesting. I think, you know, with the addition of those two elements, plus, you know, everything else that's changed, you know, it really is, uh, it really is unpredictable. But I guess for now, it uh, looks like if we had to bet money, it'd be on Titans versus F- SF Shock, uh, which would be fun. So, uh, yeah, I think that's most everything I had uh, planned to talk about. Anything else from you guys? Any final thoughts? No, I'm nope. excited nope. to come back <laughs> again to talk about uh, next week. Yeah, we'll yeah. reevaluate after the plans. Yeah, yeah it's gonna yeah. be great. <laughs> yeah. All right, so yeah, thank you everybody for uh, uh, joining us this week on the Overwatch League Report. Make sure to join your three hosts, Jenny, Ben, and Tor next week, and. Uh, Make sure to follow us uh, on Twitter and subscribe and like the video and hit the bell button and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. See you.